remember again my friend Jeff. Now Jeff was never restored by his church, interestingly enough. They just didn't want to be bothered. They, they just neglected it totally, completely. But Jeff, here he is in the hospital for a month. Told you, 10 days in a coma, heart started five times, more dead than alive, over $100,000 in medical bill. And I knew Jeff, but not well. I hadn't seen Jeff in a couple of years or more. We were never great friends, but we, we certainly knew each other. But I was working at a hospital, and I volunteered there just a couple hours a week, and I had been off for uh, three months. I hadn't worked at the hospital because I was traveling, but the first day I went back, one of my jobs at the hospital was to uh, dismiss patients, to go up and get them in a wheelchair, wheel them out for the family to take them. So I came in that day, I put on my little coat, got my badge, and they gave me the card of somebody to discharge. And I looked at the room number, I didn't look at the name, the room number, and I, I wheeled the wheelchair into the room, and here was this man, very thin, long hair, just very, uh, very fragile. I didn't know him. And he said to me, he said, Dennis. I said, Dennis, how does he know me? And I looked at my card and it said, Jeff Leland. I said, this can't be. The Jeff Leland I do, he played football at the University of Washington, played in the Rose Bowl, big, healthy, strong, good looking guy. And here was a scarecrow in front of me. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I put him in the wheelchair. I said, Jeff, what happened? And he told me in about five minutes his story. And I knew, and he knew, that it wasn't by accident that I was the one that went to his room, that it was my first day back when we knew God orchestrated that. And I got his daughter's phone number. And long story, Jeff and I began to meet. But here's what happened. Is that the church didn't restore him. He felt like he had gotten his life right with the Lord. But what happens now? I introduced him, and I thank God for these men. I was in a Bible study with four men. I said, guys, I need your help. I said, what do you think about Jeff coming in here and let's surround him with love. And let's comfort him. Let's let him know he's forgiven. Let's celebrate that he's back in fellowship with the Lord. And I talked to Jeff, and he came into that meeting, and he, he looked terrible. And he came in and kind of hid down, could anybody love me? He was just like a whipped dog. How could anybody love me after what I've done? And, and these guys responded. And Jeff writes in my book, I had him write his story, the whole story in this book that I've written called Fallen. We've had Jeff's story there. Broken, Jeff gives us a story about being broken and then restored. And Jeff gives his story in detail. And uh, let me just read part of it. So I introduced him to these four men, friends of mine. This is what Jeff says. And this is real restoration now, relational restoration. I found this group to be informal, accepting, and supportive, open to whatever anyone wanted to share. What an honor to be surrounded by these men of integrity and character and they loved God. They became Jesus' hands and feet to me, especially in the driver's seat of a car. They offered me rides at all hours, and that's for sure, shared meals with me, helped me through money problems without even asking. When it came time for me to move out from my daughter's home, he moved into the home of one of these uh, individuals. They made me feel welcome never asking for a dime. It was beautiful. 
more than I could have ever asked or paid for. These men ventured into the deepest, darkest valley of my life. It still doesn't make sense to me. I certainly didn't deserve it, nor could I have orchestrated it. There was definitely nothing in it for them. Most important, most important, they immersed me in God's grace and encouragement. I knew well the feelings of rejection and failure by many Christians, I might add. Rejection. But upon that dark backdrop in my soul, these men painted a beautiful image of hope in the love and power of Christ. Through brokenness and loss of nearly everything during my life, I am finding what matters most now is my relationship to Jesus Christ. Now in quietness and confidence, I know exactly where I must be today, abiding with my Lord, as I stay faithfully rooted in God, and as he sees fit, he will make me into a tree that bears beautiful and bountiful fruit, firmly planted, withstanding any storm life brings, providing much shelter to those in need. God will make me usable for his kingdom and glory in ways that I could never dream. Amen. And that's exactly what's happened to Jeff. Amazing how he has responded. But what if that group of men, he didn't get it from his church, the church missed out on the blessing. What, what the church could have done and should have done that same thing. They didn't. They totally neglected him, rejected him, let him know that he wasn't real welcome after what he had done, even though he was broken and repentant and all the rest. But God raised up this group of men, and uh, it, it was sacrificial. It cost us uh, many late nights with Jeff, many early mornings, many times it wasn't convenient to drive him here, drive him there, because he lost everything. Uh, financially, uh, it tapped deep into all of us. But you know, we were glad to do it and to see how God used that and how Jeff is doing today and how God is using him, will continue to use him for the glory of God. Grace is dramatic. So understand, church discipline, yes, that's very biblical and how to deal with an unrepentant person is very biblical. Sounds harsh. How to deal with a repentant person is very essential. How to have the rebuilding process is key. And how to celebrate the uh, grace of God, re restoration, is absolutely important. And I am totally convinced where, uh, where God finds a church that is a grace-filled church who loves his truth but loves people and shows his grace to fallen, broken people. God's blessing will be there. And I hope those of you that are listening to the lecture will take the time and pay the price to review the scriptures and look at your church in light of these scriptures and do what God asked you to do. And don't be afraid to share the grace of God. Charles Person said it so well, and I close this lecture series with these words. He said, abundant sin is no barrier to the super abundant grace of God. And it's available for saint and sinner alike. God bless you as you implement these biblical principles of church discipline and restoration. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the Kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.